Welcome to Recap King. In this video, we will explain Harakiri, Death of a Samurai. This movie tells a story of a samurai who struggles to avenge his son-in-law's death and his daughter's suffering. In the name of a samurai, he intends to bring justice to his family. Can he avenge his family and uphold the integrity of a samurai? Let's find out in Harakiri, Death of a Samurai. Harakiri Death of a Samurai begins by showing a samurai without a master or ronin, named Hanshiro Tsugumo, who comes to a luxurious house owned by a family from the Lee clan. Hanshiro came to the house of the Lee clan to meet their clan leader named Sato Kageyo. After Mr. Kageyo invited Hanshiro in, he introduced himself as a samurai from the Fukushima Masanori family clan. Hanshiro's purpose in coming to Kageyo's place was because he wanted to commit seppuku or Harakiri. It is a ritual to end the life of a Japanese samurai by piercing his stomach with a sword to restore their good name after failing to carry out their duties as a samurai. Hearing Hanshiro's words, Mr. Kageyo immediately said he received seppuku respect from Hanshiro and told him that some time before, a young man named Chijua Motome came to commit seppuku in Mr. Kageyo's place as well. The scene changes to an incident in the past, where in the early autumn of 1634, the 20 year old Chijua Motome came to Mr. Kageyo's place to commit seppuku. Mr. Kageyo received seppuku's respect for Motome and allowed him to shower and change clothes before committing seppuku. Shortly after, when Motome's seppuku was about to be held, all the samurai of Mr. Kageyo gathered and prepared for the ritual. One of Mr. Kageyo's senior samurai named Omodaka, who led the seppuku, said they would witness a rare occurrence. On the other hand, Motome, already prepared, couldn't find the sword he kept under the bed in his room. Shortly after that, Omodaka came and asked Motome to immediately go to the main courtyard to commit seppuku, but Motome, who was feeling scared, asked him for a moment to muster up his courage. Unfortunately, Motome's request was ignored by Omodaka, and Motome was immediately taken to the courtyard. After waiting for a while, Mr. Kageo finally gave Motome a brief appreciation for being willing to commit seppuku at his house. In those days, seppuku was considered a great honor for a samurai, and so does the house where seppuku was conducted. When the seppuku was about to be carried out, a hesitant Motome begged Mr. Kageyo for one more day. But the samurai in the place opposed it, and Mr. Kageyo refused the request because he would never tolerate any seppuku that had been prepared. Motome finally had no other choice but to commit the seppuku, and Omodaka gave the sword to him, which had been replaced with a bamboo sword. Apparently, Motome's sword had already been taken by Omodaka and deliberately replaced with a bamboo sword. Before that, Motome approached and begged Mr. Kageyo to give him three Rio's money to care for Motome's sick wife and children. Apparently, Motome came to Mr. Kageyo's place because he got the news that in that place, a young samurai could commit fake seppuku to get donations from Mr. Kageyo. Because Mr. Kageyo didn't give any answer, Motome was finally forced to commit the seppuku. He repeatedly stabbed the bamboo sword into his stomach until the sword broke. Motome, who was in great pain, asked the samurai who were there to kill him but Omodaka didn't do his job and let him suffer longer. Mr. Kageyo, who couldn't bear Motome's suffering, immediately approached Motome and slashed Motome's neck to stop him from being in pain. The scene goes back to the time when Hanshiro comes to commit seppuku at Kageyo's place at the beginning of the film. Soon after, Mr. Kageyo and his samurai gathered in the main courtyard to make seppuku for Hanshiro. Before Hanshiro committed seppuku, he asked Mr. Kageyo to grant his last wish. Namely that he be accompanied by Omodaka Hikokuro, who is Mr. Kageyo's most loyal follower. Hearing this, Mr. Kageyo immediately ordered one of his samurai to look for Omodaka. Unfortunately, Omodaka and the other two samurai had disappeared and had not returned yet. Mr. Kageyo, who realized that Hanshiro had done something to his best samurai, immediately stood up and prepared to attack him. Hanshiro calmly asked Mr. Kageyo and all the samurai to wait and listen to his story first. After Hanshiro finished telling his story later, he just allowed the samurai to fight him. Hanshiro then explained to Mr. Kageyo and all the samurai about Chijua Motome, who turned out to be his son-in-law. The scene switches to the past, where Hanshiro is invited to the Japanese emperor's palace as a builder. Hanshiro was forced to leave his beloved daughter, Miho, to wait at home alone because Hanshiro's wife had died. The next day, Hanshiro and Mr. Chijua, who is Motome's father, came to the palace to repair the palace fence. Not long after, several men came to meet Mr. Chijua and asked him to immediately repair the fort, but he refused to do it because it violated the rules of the war treaty in the Japanese Empire. 
Then, one of the men informed Mr. Chijua that the Shogun family clan, a high-class clan, had been willing to do the job. Hearing this, Mr. Chijua became indecisive and didn't know whether to work on the fort or not. The next day, Hanshiro and Miho came to Mr. Chijua's house for a visit. There, Miho finally gets acquainted with Chijua Motome, the son of Mr. Chijua. Hanshiro then spoke to Mr. Chijua about the Shogun clan. Hanshiro suspected that the Shogun's clan was conspiring to eliminate the clans that were once his enemies. But Mr. Chijua hoped that would never happen. Two years later, in 1619, the Shogun's clan issued a decree punishing Chijua's clan for violating the rules of war by building a fort without permission. As punishment, Chijua's clan was expelled from the region, and the buildings built by Chijua's family were to be destroyed. That means Hanshiro's previous assumption proved to be true that Mr. Chijua was being framed by the Shogun's clan so that they could get rid of Chijua's clan. Hearing this, the sick Mr. Chijua did not accept it and intended to commit seppuku. However, Mr. Chijua's body is already very weak and worsening. During Mr. Chijua's dying condition, Hanshiro tried to calm him by saying that he would always care for Motome. Then in 1620, the Fukushima clan was officially disbanded. This made Hanshiro lose his job as a court samurai. He then decides to sell paper umbrellas so that he can provide for Motome and Mio's life. One day, Hanshiro fished in a lake with Motome. After a few hours, they finally managed to get a goldfish to serve as a side dish for their meal that day. As they returned home from fishing, Hanshiro and Motome watched the show procession enter the beautiful and stately home of the Lee family clan. Motome then said that he would work in the mansion when he grew up so he could repay Hanshiro and Miho's kindness. Ten years later, the fate of Hanshiro and his family still hasn't changed. Hanshiro still works as an artist making paper umbrellas. Miho, who has grown up, now helps her father earn a little money from assisting children in learning to read and write. One night, Hanshiro asked Motome to meet him to talk about something. He then asks Motome to marry Miho because Hanshiro wants his daughter to be with someone who genuinely loves her. Motome was initially hesitant to accept the offer considering he still doesn't have a steady job and the wages from teaching children are very low. But after, Hanshiro explained to Motome that he just wanted Miho to be happy with the person she loves. Motome then decided to accept the offer and promised to always protect Miho. A few months later, after Miho and Motome were officially married, they finally had a son named Kingu. Hanshiro looks very fond of his grandson and always plays with him. A few days later, Mio started to fall sick and coughed up blood. Hanshiro, worried about his daughter's health, asked Miho to tell him if she needed help. In that year, the public began to receive rumors about young samurai committing fake seppuku to obtain donations from the rulers. Hanshiro, who heard that, looked surprised, but he didn't say anything. Miho's health condition was getting worse, and Mio started coughing up blood continuously. A worried Motome decides to sell his books to earn money to buy medicine. Unfortunately, the money Motome got from selling the book was still not enough so that he could only afford to buy a small amount of medicine for his wife. Miho, who continues to be sickly, starts to feel guilty and often apologizes to her husband because she is only a burden to him. But Motome didn't think of Miho as a burden and tried to calm her down. Anshiro, who saw his daughter's illness getting worse, then apologized to Motome because his daughter had made Motome feel anxious. Hanshiro received news that Kingu was sick with a fairly high fever a few days later. Hanshiro, who felt worried, immediately ran to his daughter's house to check on his grandson's condition. Motome had already taken Kingu to the doctor, but he had to pay an advance of three ryo, and he couldn't afford to pay that much money. Motome then asked Hanshiro to accompany Miho and Kingu at home while he went out to earn some money. Motome promised to come back in the afternoon and bring the money. After Motome left, Hanshiro and Miho, who were at home, tried to cover the gaps in the house with paper so that air could not enter. After a few hours, the day turned to night. Hanshiro was confused because Motome still hadn't come back until nightfall. Meanwhile, Miho, who had a bad feeling, immediately checked her son. She realized that Kingu had stopped breathing and started to panic and cry while calling out her son's name. Hanshiro, who was at home, began to cry sadly after knowing that his grandson had passed away. Mio felt very guilty for her son's death and kept apologizing to Kingu for still not being able to protect him. Seeing this, Hanshiro tried to calm her down and said that this was not Mio's fault. Shortly after Hanshiro and Mio buried Kingu, some unknown men came to their house. Not finished with sadness over Kingu's death, now Hanshiro and Mio have to face the fact that Motome has died. The man said that Motome had committed seppuku honorably at the residence of the Lee family clan while handing over Motome's body. Hearing that, 
Hanshiro was clearly shocked as he couldn't believe that Motome had gone to commit seppuku. Hanshiro felt very upset and devastated to see his son-in-law die. After seeing Motome's sword, which had been replaced with a bamboo sword, Hanshiro felt very angry because it was both an insult and torture to a samurai. Therefore, Hanshiro immediately went after the man who had sent Motome's body and asked about how Motome had died. The man then said that most likely, Motome intended to commit fake seppuku at the Lee family's residence to get donations, but committed real seppuku instead. Meanwhile, Miho, who was at home, looked at Motome's body with deep sadness. Feeling that all is lost, she decides to end her life the same way her husband died. After going through long suffering, Miho finally died beside Motome's body. When Hanshiro returned home, he was devastated after seeing his beloved daughter die by taking her own life. He then decided to take revenge on the Lee clan. The scene changes to the moment where Hanshiro is in the main courtyard of Mr. Kagayo's house to continue the seppuku ritual. Hanshiro then said that Motome had done a very honorable deed, because as a samurai, he had sold his sword to help his family. Hanshiro admitted that Motome's actions in committing fake seppuku to gain sympathy from the authorities were not justified. After all, allowing a samurai to commit seppuku using a bamboo sword is an insult to the samurai's dignity and the suffering of his family. Mr. Kageyo then asked Hanshiro about what happened to his best samurai. Hearing this question, Hanshiro took out the money they had placed on Motome's body and took out all the top knots of the best samurai belonging to Mr. Kageyo. Apparently, after Hanshiro received information about fake seppuku from the man who sent Motome's body at that time, he immediately went to meet the samurai who let Motome suffer in the last seconds of his life. After Hanshiro managed to defeat the samurai, he took their crests as a sign that their honor as a samurai had now been lost. After hearing Hanshiro's explanation, Mr. Kageyo ordered all his samurai to kill Hanshiro and immediately left the courtyard. Without feeling the slightest fear, Hanshiro began to take out his bamboo sword and prepared to fight all the samurai. Hanshiro, who had now lost everything, was not afraid of death and didn't seem afraid. He then led the samurai into the house of Mr. Kageyo. Apparently, Hanshiro did that on purpose to find the honorary symbol of the Lee family clan and to bring down the symbol. Seeing that his family's symbol of honor was destroyed, Mr. Kageyo felt very angry. After destroying the symbol of honor, Hanshiro surrendered and let all of Mr. Kageyo's samurai slash his body. Hanshiro recalled sweet memories of when his daughter gave birth to his beloved grandson in the last seconds before his death. Not long after, Mr. Kageyo's samurai managed to find Omodaka and two other samurai. Omodaka, feeling very embarrassed, decides to commit seppuku with two other samurai. A few days later, Mr. Kageyo's men had repaired the honorary symbol of the Lee family clan. When the family of the Shogun clan came to visit the residence of Mr. Kageyo, the symbol of honor was back as before. The movie closes with a scene where the samurai pay their respects to the symbol of honor. The moral that can be learned from this movie is, not to step on other people's self-esteem or add to the suffering of people who have fallen and are destroyed.